Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. What is the role of the ulama in Islam? How important is their role? And how blindly should we follow them? And how much should we overlook their mistakes and their shortcomings? These are all questions that the average Muslim always thinks about. And they're very pertinent questions. And especially recently, this has been a huge discussion and talking point. After the video went viral online of brother Daniel Hakiki Chu, Allah SWT rewarded him and his efforts uh, in exposing deviance and the work in his, his da'wah. Anyway, brother Daniel Hakiki Chu, a video appeared and went viral online of him confronting Imam Suhaib Web. So basically what happened was, we know brother Daniel has his channel Muslim Skeptic. And part of his work is that he exposes what deviant views and mistakes of imams to warn the Muslims. And so one of these imams that he, he exposed some of his problematic statements that he, that he made online. So this imam Suhaib Web took exception to this. And in the masjid, he openly challenged Daniel Hakiki to, if you're, if you're a man, come down and meet me face to face because you're spreading lies about me. So then Hakikichu took up this challenge and went to that masjid, in, I think it is in Houston in America, and he faced Suhaib Web. They had a confrontation face to face, and now that video is online and it's causing an enormous stir and controversy. And one of the discussion points amongst many is this whole issue of the ulama. How important are the ulama? Are the ulama untouchable? Are they infallible? Can we question them? Can we, uh, can we uh, announce their shortcomings and their mistakes? And specifically, after Yasser Qadi put out a statement on his Facebook account, coming to the defense of Suhaib Web, and basically putting down Suhaib Web's credentials that Suhaib Web has mastered Arabic and he's memorized the Quran and he's memorized um, the Quran, uh, mastered the Quran, the Quran, so on and so forth. That he's a scholar and they studied together. And when he referred to Daniel in that post, he said he called Daniel a troublemaker. He said this troublemaker trying to discredit Imam Suhaib Web, right? And so the idea is, look, this is a alim. This is a scholar. He has the wisdom. He has the knowledge. Right? Even if he makes mistakes, who are you? Daniel, you're, you're just a troublemaker. You're a layman. You don't have the knowledge. You don't understand. You don't have the wisdom of the ulama. They're a class above. And he mentioned a few other things. And one thing that I find that he mentioned, I find very disturbing is that Yasser Qadi and Suhaib Web are, are both part of the Fuqh Council of North America. And I find that very disturbing. Anyway, he finished off his statement. He said, no one benefits when fitna is caused within our communities and when scholars are mocked or taken down. So this is the idea that always perpetuated amongst the Muslims. That the scholars, they're a class above. That they're a shining light. That they need to be respected. That you can't try and discredit them. That you can't uh, try and look at their mistakes and try and bring them down. Right? They're the ulama. They have the knowledge. They have the wisdom. You're just laymen. They understand. Even if they make mistakes, they understand what's best. And so, is this correct? Should we blindly follow the ulama? Right? And we say, absolutely not. We're not going to blindly follow ulama. Nor does Islam command us to blindly follow ulama. Nor should ulama be on this pedestal. They are not infallible. They are not above everyone else. When they make mistakes, they are not to be followed and that they, they are to be accounted. Yes, we know the importance of the role of the ulama. Allah SWT himself has praised them in the Quran when he said, in many places, but one, one specific verse where Allah SWT said, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ Allah SWT says, those who truly fear Allah from his servants are the ulama. This is their level, right? But who fits this description? Because this description today of ulama and imam and scholar, it's loosely thrown around. Very loosely. The scholars have mentioned to, to fit this description that Allah praises in the Quran, you have to have two things. The knowledge, obviously. In the Quran, in the usul, in the tafsir, in the Arabic language, in the hadith sciences and so on and so forth. 
and as just as critical, you have to have the taqwa, the fear of Allah. The alim is the one that regardless of the consequences, he doesn't change the sayings of Allah. He doesn't change the verses. He doesn't change the command of Allah. No matter the repercussions, no matter if he's facing torture, imprisonment, death, no matter if it's going to win him worldly praise and wealth, he fears Allah and he says only what Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran and the Sunnah. This is the alim. He has the knowledge and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ulama who put on a pedestal and these are the ulama that deserve that title and these are the ones that we will give the respect to. But if you don't fit that description, then you don't deserve this title of ulama. And we are not going to blindly follow ulama. Nor is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command us to blindly follow them. And if we blindly follow them, it becomes detrimental in this world and in hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a verse in the Quran that gives us clear guidance on this issue. How should we view, view the ulama? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when you go to Surah At-Tawbah, verse 31. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his revelation, after a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح بن مريم وما وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إلها واحدا لا إله إلا هو لا إله إلا هو سبحانه عما يشركون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says they took their rabbis and their priests as أرباب as gods besides Allah and عيسى المسيح the son of Maryam and they were not ordered except to worship one God, there is no God except He. Glory be to Him from what they ascribe to Him of partners. So in this verse, Allah has given us guidance. It's a very important verse when it comes to the issue and discussion of the ulama. Because Allah Taala tells us in this verse that the Jews and the Christians, they took their rabbis and their priests as lords besides Allah. It's shocking, right? How did this happen? And if you open up the tafsir of Ibn Kathir, in the explanation of this verse, he tells us a hadith narrated by Imam Ahmad and At-Tirmidhi. The Adi ibn Hatim, he used to be a Christian and he became a Muslim. That when he heard this verse, اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله that they took rabbis and their monks to be lords besides Allah. Adi said to Prophet they did not worship them. Adi was shocked. He thought that they took them as actual, literally, as Allah. So Prophet explained to him, بَلَا إِنَّهُمْ حَرَّمُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْحَلَالِ وَأَحَلُّ لَهُمُ الْحَرَامِ فَاتَّبَعُوهُمْ فَذَلِكَ عِبَادَتُهُمْ إِيَّاهُمْ Prophet said, yes, they did. They worshipped them. They, meaning the rabbis and the monks, prohibited the allowed for them and allowed the prohibited and they obeyed them. This is how they worshipped them. So Prophet is explaining to us here what happened to the Jews and the Christians. They had their rabbis and the priests today, just like we have ulama. They looked up to those ulama, they praised those ulama, they followed those ulama, their rabbis and their priests. But they blindly followed them. Why? Because over time, when they were, they, these rabbis and priests, they were making mistakes. They were saying things that are problematic. They were saying things that were, that were deviant. But nobody was questioning until they got to a point. But Prophet ﷺ said, they were making the halal haram. The allowed prohibited and they were making the haram halal and the prohibited allowed. And Prophet said that's how they took them as Lord beside Allah. Why? Because they left the view of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the commands of Allah, the prohibitions of Allah, the teachings of Allah in the Quran and the Sunnah, and they blindly followed scholars until they reinterpreted the whole deen, changed the whole deen, 
So now they are in actual fact worshipping rabbis and priests, ulama, instead of Allah. Why? Because they're following their commandments instead of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this verse is critical in understanding this issue of ulama. This is why regardless of the scholar, regardless of their knowledge, regardless of their good or the titles that they have, they are not infallible. They are not above mistake. When they make mistakes, it, those mistakes need to be criticized. When they say things that are problematic and kufr, those things need to be exposed and the Muslims need to be warned. Why? So we don't end up leaving the commands of Allah and following the commands and the teachings of scholars instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see now, when you, you can't throw this term of ulama around loosely. We said the alim has to have knowledge and taqwa, fear of Allah. When you're making problematic statement after problematic statement, you don't have the fear of Allah anymore. You're not going to be blindly followed. When you come out, all these scholars, many of them, and you say that we should ally with LGBT, we should look for the, their rights. When someone like Jonathan Brown comes out and says, I support a system that allows people to insult the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Yaqeen comes out and puts a paper, an article on their website saying that evolution doesn't contradict the Quran. When you have scholars, so-called scholars coming out and saying that the narrative about the Quran, that there's issues in the holes of the narratives of the Quran and how the Quran was collected, Right. When you have scholars coming out and saying that the Sharia of Allah, the Ahkam, the Hudud, the legal punishments, that they are problematic today, that they need to be reformed, we need to have discussions about reforming them. When you make statements and call the laws of Allah bizarre, right? Imagine how could these statements be coming from scholars? Allah says in His laws, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاسِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allah says in the laws of Allah, in the hadood, in the punishment system, when you kill someone, you are killed. When the thief steals, his hand is cut. When you commit fornication, you are lashed. Allah says you have life. It's life for the community when you apply the punishments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you say that we need to reform these punishments, that these laws are bizarre, they don't fit in our modern age. So now you don't deserve this title of alim. You can't be blindly followed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us about the, the Jews and the Christians. They blindly followed their rabbis and their priests until they took them as lords besides Allah. Why? Because they're changing the halal and haram. When you want to secularize Islam, when you want to liberalize Islam, when you put doubts on the Quran, when you want to support LGBT rights, when you call the laws of Allah bizarre, you're changing and reforming the halal and haram of Allah and making up your own halal and haram, then you're not going to be blindly followed. And Allah SWT demands upon us that we do not blindly follow you. Why? Because we'll end up in hellfire. So this is the issue of how we need to understand this issue of the ulama. Yes, if the alim has knowledge and taqwa, he has the fear of Allah, and we see his actions have taqwa, and he's leading the ummah towards goodness, he should be respected. He should be followed. We can overlook some mistakes and shortcomings and we can forgive them. But when a so-called ulama, they've studied, but they don't have any taqwa. They continuously make problematic statements, kufr statements. They continuously put doubt on the deen, secularize and liberalize the deen. Then these kinds of ulama, we're not going to blindly follow. And people like Brother Daniel and others like him, Allah reward them. We need people in the ummah to account them and expose the mistakes and warn the Muslims. This is absolutely critical. So brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the way, inshallah, we need to understand this whole issue of ulama and whether we can criticize the ulama and whether we follow, blindly follow the ulama. In the end, we have Allah, the Quran, and the Sunnah. The only person we blindly follow is the Messenger of Allah. Everyone else, depending on their actions and their statements, if they go astray, if they deviate, then we will count them and expose them for that. And we do not blindly follow anyone. And this is the warning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Zerkum Lohkhairan, please like the video, comment on the video, and please subscribe to the channel, inshallah, so I can continue uh, to put out videos like this, inshallah, that inshallah can be of, of benefit uh, to the ummah and to the community.